Amen, church. It's a solid time now. Don't know about nobody else, but the word of God being preached is a serious thing. I don't say this out of pride, but I say this out of humility. There's nothing that I can offer any human being. I have no power in my hands. And I always say before I preach, if you've come here to hear a word from a man, you're in the wrong place. You know, the preacher right here, I have sense enough to know that you came to hear a word from God. So by you not praying for me, it's to your detriment. Hello, church. It's, it's not about who's who here. We are all in the same boat. The Lord asked me to preach today, amen? I didn't ask myself to preach today, so for you guys to pray for me, it is to your and my advantage. For we need God to move in this place. If you see me up here as someone higher than you, then you are going to lose today. You need to see me as on the same level as you are. But I'm just the instrument today. And without further ado, I know we know this song, Break Bow the Bread of Life. One of my favorite songs when I come to enter the, the podium of preaching. And I'd like to just read a few verses for you just to get your mind in the frame mind or the frame set, the mindset to receive the word. Yeah. Second to last verse of the song, 271, Bring Adam, Bread of Life. It says this. It says, Thou art the bread of life, O Lord, to me. It says, by holy word, the truth that saveth me. Give me to eat and live with thee above. Teach me to love thy truth. It says, for thou art love. And this is where the fervor comes for me. It says, spirit and life are they. Words thou dost speak. I Hasten to obey. But guess what, church? It says, But I am weak. Thou art my only help. Thou art my life. Heeding thy holy word, I win. We win the strife. Heeding thy holy word, we can win. Is strength. It was a few months ago, I was driving back from preaching in the Stone Newington Church in London. I had a long day. I was at university studying books that were going over my head in the first place. I was confused for the whole day. I was tired and anxious. And then I had to go home in my 10 minute break, in my last period, I had to drive home two minutes away, get ready, have a shower, put my suit on, and then come back to the same class. Hello, church. You guys are hearing me today. And I'll sit back down, and everybody was like, What happened to you? After the class, now I jumped in the car and I drove down through traffic, bobbing and weaving to Stone Newington Church. And I got there just on time to preach. Hallelujah. I finished the sermon now and it's home time. So I'm driving home. It starts to rain. I mean like rain, rain. I'm not talking about this, this slight rain. I'm talking about the rain, rain, where you sometimes, if you can't really handle the, you know, the road, you pull over and wait. But I can handle the road, amen? So I kept on driving in the rain. It was very, 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 very crazy. Storm rain. And it was 9.15 in the rain, pouring down. I was safe in the car, right? Amen, church? I was in the car. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. But then, a moment of madness came over me. And it wasn't really my fault. But a moment of, of, of unawareness caused me to clip my front tire on the right side, on the curb. Imagine you're driving on the road, just follow me now, you're driving on the road, and then you're trying to come out of the junction, but it comes out like this, but then there was a big curb. Not like the little, little you know, minor curbs. And it licked me. My good friend in the car said, Andrew, man, this I know must be a write-off now. It sounded like a write-off, literally. 
came out the car, and all that two piece was that the back tire tire had popped, and the rim had only been scraped. That's a hallelujah, by the way, church. That's it. No hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. I could have been dead, church. Amen. That's it. But it doesn't end there. I'm trying to go somewhere. I now had to get out the car in the rain. Let's just call it my ship. Is that okay, church? My ship has now been affected by the curve. Amen? Don't miss me. So now, because of my circumstance, I have to come on my car. So, in the new cars, not the old cars, in order to change your, your wheel, there is a special lock on one nut. Talk to me now, church. Don't sit there now like I'm on my own. Yet still saved. 
No, no, that, that don't even make sense. Shipwrecked, yet still saved. So I'm shipwrecked now, right? Tire gone. I have a spare tire, but I can't take off the back tire. My dad now lives in South Norwood in Croydon, and he, he's a gas engineer. He has crews in his van. And I told him, I said, listen, man, is there anything you can do? He drives down. It is now 12.30 in the night time. I used to be on the streets in London. I know about the bad areas, the good areas. I know where to go, where not to go. I can tell you right now, there are some places you better not go. Don't break down in some places. Hello, church. So I now was in an area, no work of a life. I was in an area where I was okay, but I kid you not, there was an estate, a what church? An estate that did not like me when I was in my PC days. <laughs> you know, many people, when Jefferson comes again the next time, you ask him the truth. Jefferson was scared out of his wits. <laughs> but I told him I should never have told him. I said to him, hey guys, where are we are? Because my dad came for me. And because his best friend lives in that area, Jamaican man, amen church? Yes. You went home. Left me behind, amen? <laughs> you know what I mean? They hold their own and, and speed off. I kid you not, church. Two vehicles pulled into that estate. Winding down their window. I know we're laughing and joking, but this has to be serious. Winding down their window and screamed out, Yo, who's that? My friend Solomon, we grew up together in the same area, even though I went to church. Solomon didn't go to church. He converted to Adventism only two years ago, and he could swear blind that I was lying to him when I told him I went to church when I was younger. <laughs> he literally said, Pull up, you went to this church in London? I said, yes, I was just being a fake Christian. <laughs> so he said to me now, Pull up, because he knows me, who I am, deep down in my natural man, even though we're changed. Solomon, he assessed the situation and said, Pull up, let's just go. Go where, Jim? At that time, he prayed again and said, God, the miraculous movement that we expected you to move, even though it didn't come how we wanted it to, we're still going to move forward knowing that you're still the captain of this broken ship. We jumped in the car like it had some fresh tires and we sped out of that place. Are you guys hearing today? And we came out the junction and we were even keeping up with cars that had. <laughs> so, please don't miss this church. I was now taking cars. You're not going to believe this church. Who that? I saw my dad. Are you guys hearing me? Because I was going to his house. I didn't go to Bradley, but I drove to South Norway. And here's the point. Listen very carefully. The car was not drivable, but by faith in God, we said the car is going to make it to my father's house. <laughs> even if the car breaks down, I said, God, even if the tires drop off, I'm not stopping until I get to my father's house. She wrecked, yet still saving. He got to my father's house. The next day, he paid. For both tires. Amen? Amen. That's the reason why I went to the house. <laughs> there was no other reason. I mean, you go and I'm studying, hands are hard. I said, if I put my dad, eventually he has to come and pay for the car in the first place. So pretty the Lord for that. When you, when you are shipwrecked, but you persevere, blessing comes. And you guys heard me today. But let's make this plain here today. Where are we going today? Every ship sailing on the sea of life is very carefully. It needs a divine pilot on board. Are you guys hearing me today? But when storms arise in our life, when tempests threaten our situations, many persons, what we do is we push the pilot overboard and commit our bark into the hand of finite man. And if we don't do that, what we try to do is we push the pilot off board and the 
though he tried to stand the ship. I remember there was a big ship that capsized. Are you guys with me today? What was the name of the ship? The RMS Titanic. Come to God in heaven at this time. Come over me, Holy Spirit. Lay my trembling heart and brow. Fill me, Lord, with your hallowed presence. Come, O come, Lord, and fill me now. Fill me now, Lord, fill me now. Because only you have the power to fill me now. So fill us, Lord, with your hallowed presence. Come, O come, and fill us now. Amen. This was an Olympic class ocean liner. RMS Titanic was a British passenger liner that sank in the North Atlantic Ocean on what date? 19th. The 15th of April, 1912. How, after colliding with an iceberg, during her maiden voyage, don't miss this now, it was found, sorry, it was, it was from Southampton, UK, to New York City. The length of the ship was 269 meters, the construction started on March the 31st, 1909. Don't miss this now, it weighed 52,000 tons. The designer was Thomas Andrews, and where it was built was in Belfast. The builder, if you wanted to know that, it was Harlan and Ruth. Now, early one morning, please don't miss this, Captain Edward J. Smith, what he did was he cancels he cancels a drill. Life God drill. So this captain, he said, I kid you not, you know, your research, he saw that the ship that was built was so magnificent, he didn't even see no need for no drill. Are you guys heard me today? He said, come on now, these men are so intellectual in the gospel building things, and now we have one of the biggest and best you know, architecture stuff that can sail on the sea. Wow, we don't need to test this stuff. That's gonna waste time and petrol. Hello, church. Let's just get this ship on the road. Mistake number one. Never cancel. Like never change. Never cancel the drills of life. Mistake number two and three and four and five of the Titanic capsizing, it all began with one mistake at the beginning. When the trials, this very carefully, if they went on the sea and they went through the drill and they saw the places and they learned how to do this and do that, then when the real storm came, then they'll know how to handle it. Sometimes we think that, you know, you know, trials come in our lives and bad things come in our lives to bring us down. I'm breaking it down. When bad things take place in your life, the Lord can see further in your life that there's a bigger iceberg. So he gives you the minor iceberg and says, just pour fast through this minor iceberg and then you'll be able to handle the next one. Do not run away from the drills that are there to make us strong. Listen very carefully. This was now 5, 50 p.m. precisely. We're going to dive into this thing now. It says this, after receiving an iceberg warning, say that with me, church, after receiving an iceberg warning, throughout the whole day, Captain Smith, because of the warning of the iceberg, what he did was this. He was like, wow, what I need to do now is change my course. Captain Smith, because of the, 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 you know, the warning that there might be an iceberg, what he did is he allowed that information to take him off his road. Mm. Come here, Richard. Breaking it down to you. Many of people that come to this church, our church, your church, and my church, many of people right now are on the verge of even leaving the church. And I'm breaking it down. Nobody ever leaves the church because of God. 
I was saying, you see, sometimes you have, as a preacher, you must bring your own amen. Amen, church? Amen. So you don't have to, I don't need your amen today, church. Amen? I say my own amen. Amen, church? Amen. It's very careful. Many times, I hey, listen, accept the fact, church. God is love. God is loving. God is kind. People don't need God. People don't God. But I am not advocating those who have left because of people. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying it like it is. People need God because of circumstances. Think about it. You came to church. Why did you stay? Because things were easy. You know, everyone was, hi, how you doing? Praise the Lord. New baptismal candidates. Yes, sing in church. Do the welcome. But when people stop, when people stop gossiping about you, don't be like, mm-hmm. no church. Don't be like, yes, tell the preacher. No, no church. This ain't the time of preacher. No, truth is truth, wrong is wrong. Even though they are gossiping about you, they did not bring you to church. I don't, I don't advocate. I don't, I'm, I'm being honest and real. I don't respect no one that has come in by Jesus, but then men take them out. How dare you? How dare me? Jesus saves me, but then you, Mrs. Brown, have the power to win me the church. Amen. Foolishness. If God is so powerful in your life, nothing that takes place by anybody, any Christian, if the whole church started talking about you, then you must stick your feet and root yourself in the word of God. The old song back home in Jamaica says, rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord. You guys heard me today? It says, rooted and grounded by the Holy Ghost. It says, if you want to get to heaven, you have to be rooted and grounded. It's the only way. The road to heaven is like this. The ship that we're on, it is getting battered and bruised. Please don't miss this. The ship is not on calm water. The ship is being broken down. So when you see that there's some new holes in the ship and there's some errors coming. Hello, church. Don't get mad at me now, church. When you see that the church ain't doing the right thing and you see that so-and-so ain't preaching the right thing and you're seeing that things are changing, what the temptation is to do is say, because of how the church is looking, I'm going to leave. There was a warning, 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 warning. The Bible tells us, do you know, everything that's taking place in the church, the Bible told us already. Ravishing moves are going to come inside. It did not even say they're going to be outside sending messages inside. No, it said they're going to be inside. They're not going to be outside giving our leaflets only. They're going to be inside preaching, singing, teaching. The bottom line is this God knows, and this is what He tells us. He's warning us. Remember Captain Smith? The warning came, and what He did was He changed His course. But Jesus gives us the warning. What many of us have done, we have left the church instead of staying put. I'm leaving the church because of they're not doing this. I'm leaving the church because the Catholic church is not. The Catholic church is the same as our church. I'm leaving the church because the market of East is this. I'm leaving the church because we don't preach this. I'm leaving the church because of something else. But why are you really leaving the church? You're leaving the church because your faith has not found a resting place. Simple as that. Your faith is still shaking. And your faith is determined on circumstance. No matter what takes place in this church. Whatever bad thing takes place in this church, I'm not going anywhere. Because I know that the Lord said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, no, church. The gates of hell, it will not, shall not, and cannot prevail against it. And I'm breaking it down. Pride is the beginner of that mindset. Let me leave the church because the church ain't doing this. That's pride. And pride is of the devil itself. It leads to fanaticism. It leads to criticism. It leads to, it leads to, you know, you know, you know, food finding. I'm breaking it down that many of people have to understand our church is not a bed of roses. The Bible tells us that the wheat and the tears, not that they just build, they must grow together. 
not your job to try and save their life. It's your job to do one thing. Mimic Jesus. Your only job is to do one thing. Mimic Jesus. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Get a relationship with God. You follow Christ. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Do not worry about what's going on around you. If your eyes are on Jesus, then don't miss this now. The only one that can make a mistake is Jesus. But guess what, church? He can't make no mistake. God has a focus track record. So your eyes being on Jesus is, in other words, salvation guaranteed for you. So without this thing, you left the course. Titanic now is going this way. Don't miss this now, please. Don't, please don't miss this. After receiving the ice of morning throughout the day, Captain Smith, he changes the course of the Titanic, heading slightly south. However, what he did is he put his feet on the gas. So now he's off course and he's speeding out of course. Now we often think that a warning is given to us and then when the warning comes, what we should do is run away, right? No, 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 no. Jesus warns us. So he puts you on the ship. Don't miss this now. You're on the ship and then he warns you. He says, while you're on the ship, you're going to be going and you're going to see some crazy icebergs. But guess what? What is our signifying point as to why we're still on the ship? Because who put you on the ship? No, 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 tell me, church, who put you on the ship? Jesus did. In the Bible, with the disciples, there was one time in the Bible when they were going overboard, and then Jesus, he constrained them, like you guys remember today, he constrained them to be on the ship. That means this, if God literally puts you on a ship, that ship can't sink. And if it sinks, it was meant to sink. You see, if I get in a car, church, and that car goes off road and I lose my life, my faith in Jesus is such as that I don't fear that death. Are you guys hearing me? The second death, that ain't for me anyway. If I die right now, I know with my eyes closed and open, I'll see Jesus in the sky. That's our problem, church. We fear death. We're scared of dying. I'm being deadly serious, church. I don't fear no death. If I am not a Christian and I'm solely walking in the devil's road, I will fear death. But my life is hidden in Jesus. How can I fear that, church? Listen very carefully. This breaks my heart, church. Please don't miss this. Scripture reading tells us very simply. He that the gun look up. He that begun this work in you, he is faithful to finish it until the end. And I'm saying many times, we as church members, we beat down people who have started their road, but they might not be where you are. Are you guys hearing today? They might not have stopped doing this faster, like how fast you did it. They're still wearing this and they're still eating this and they're still singing this. And we look at them and say, you can't be a Christian, but the Bible don't work like that. In Proverbs 4.18, the Bible says this, the path, the path, this is the path, the path of the just. You guys, you're going to see the airplanes and get like a Hebrew, they go over oh, here. You, you just missed that much. Of the power of the just. Don't miss that. Key word is just. The just is divine, not based on what you said. God deems you just or oh, no just. You don't deem me just. How many of you look at my life and say you are unjust? Bible says your rights are dirty, just like my rights. Amen. The Bible breaks it down. The power of the just. It shines more and more until the perfect day. The original context of that text is very simple. It's not rocket science. It's very, very simple. The point is this. There could be five people in a race. They, they, they don't listen now. There could be a leader. Yes, he is just. He is fervor. But then there could be someone behind that leader who is not as as they yet, but he is still just. The power of 
the just. Can I tell you why, church? Let me just break this down because I know there's some people who are saying to me, preacher, I don't believe that. If I see someone doing this, then they must be unrighteous. Let's break this down logically. Is that okay, church? Don't miss this now. I need to put it there. Very good. Thank you, my brother. You, you pay her up too early. You pay her too early. Someone else, can I just come to your church anyway? Yes. Now, this young man here is, you're not my first elder, are you? But your first elder for today. First elder who is, you know, you know, charity giver, tithe, payer, you know, uh, tie, he, he wears ties all the time. Because if he doesn't wear a tie, he's of the devil, right? Y yes, according to many of us. So, even though today he's of the devil, <laughs> usually he's of, he's of Christ. Because he has a tie. So, because you have a tie, you're holy, okay? So, he has a tie, and you can only have two pieces. Amen? Okay. He does not do anything wrong that we deem as wrong. Now, we have a young man here. He is not even a Christian. This is not very carefully. He's in the world. He smokes. He drinks. He goes to clubs. He doesn't even regard the Bible. Don't miss this now. With, and don't try to smoke. Just be honest and plain. So he is the guy that does all the right stuff and he's in the church. He preaches. Don't miss it. And he's got people too. I'm breaking it down now. So they're both going to pray to Jesus. And I'm not Jesus, but God is right here. So they both are going to pray right now. Who is God going to listen to? Why both? Can I break this down, church? Listen very carefully. Even though both could be right, can I go deeper? Night broken. Ooh. Sounds like some more. Yes, I, I, I like that face. That face tells me I need to break it down. Amen? Uh -huh. That face tells me I have also some pastor who is calling the book. I like that face. When I see it, you're going to be like, oh, I see now. Righteous man, unrighteous man, neither listen if you have never sinned in your whole life. So you were born and you didn't do no bad stuff. Even when you pray, the Lord does not hear your prayer. Even when he has only done bad stuff, the Lord can't hear his prayer either. Why? Because righteousness is not the key for your prayer to be answered. It is the meritorious blood of Jesus as to why your prayer is answered. Bring that down. Come on now, church. This is why I say this legalism is of the devil because you cannot do anything to let God hear you. No, oh, church, we need to stay there for just a minute, please. I want to say that again. If we in the church here has never done one sin in our whole life, even when you come to church and say, Lord, hear me, God is made up like this. Don't miss this. You are sin, period, anyway. So even without you doing anything bad, your nature is an abhorrence to God anyway. But Jesus said, God, he, 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 you know, is living like me. But don't miss this. Even though he's living like me, he still needs me to get to you. Here's what the Bible says. No man. The Bible said no man. It didn't say some men. It didn't say unrighteous or righteous anyone. Righteous or unrighteous. No man can get to the Father but by Jesus Christ. Thank you for my volunteers. I hope we understood this point. That righteousness is not nothing to do with your works. The Bible says this. That we're forgiven. And forgiven church. It doesn't just mean. Don't miss it. We're going somewhere. We have to deviate to get this point. Forgiveness doesn't just mean. Okay, Lord, I'm a sinner, repentance, confession, forgiveness. We teach that forgiveness is that our sins have been forgiven. That means our sins have what? They've been washed away, amen? And now, being forgiven is like that powerful state of, 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 of there's no sin in your life, right? Does that mean forgiveness, church? Don't be shy, don't be shy, because that is a part of forgiveness. So don't say no. That is surely a part of forgiveness. The Lord forgive our sins and in place he gives us righteousness. But don't miss this now. Forgiveness is not just a mere judicial act. 
Hello, church. Forgiveness is not just you have 10 rubbish bags and I'll just take the rubbish bags. That's not good enough. Can I tell you why? After God takes my rubbish away, I still have to face the devil. So the devil, if that's forgiveness, he don't mind. Because all it is is this, tip for tap. You are going to get beat up by the devil. And then I'm going to just, you know, and then I'm going to forgive you. But then I'm, because now I'm clean now, right? I'm clean, but what's changed? Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Forgiveness is not just a mere judicial act. Forgiveness is the taking away from sin. But then God gives you the power to stand up against sin. That's forgiveness. When you pray for forgiveness, you're to thank God, not just for taking away your sin, but you're to walk now with the mindset that the Lord is your shield and your buckler. That's forgiveness. So the ship now, where are we now? Because we found that it went to south, right? And where is it going right now? Please don't miss this. Please don't miss this. Please, please. The Titanic now is about to, 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 to hit an iceberg. Please, just, just catch this. There was a guy that was from the Mark Corby company. And he is handed in the passengers' messages. So there was a message, there was a message that was coming through. And, and, and he handles all of the information that goes through the tannoy to those who need any message, he is he's the man for the job. The message was transmitted to him, but he was not on duty. Because we just see the film, right? And we're just seeing the film, he is up one minute, he's down. No, no, there was there's a science to ask the you know to ask the why the Titanic sank. And I've studied it, and the Lord showed me it's the exact same thing as to why many of us are going to jump off the ship of Zion. Are you guys hearing me today? Listen very carefully. He did not pass the message across. The warning is paramount to alert us into action. If that warning they said came through to everyone that needed to hear the warning, then they would have acted very, very quickly and the Titanic would not have sunk. But because those who were to give the warning were sleeping. Church, right now is the last days, right? Amen? Okay. The Lord has appointed this church. No, 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 I'm being clean and honest. It's not the other church. I'm being honest right now. The church that follows the word of God. Because the word of God, that is the voice of God. And the voice of God goes out to save people. And if you are in the true church, but you're not going outside, then you are as good as not being there in the first place. <laughs> Guys, this is not just a room where we can find people. So listen, I'm outside in the cold. Let's go to church because it's warm inside. No, no, no. That's not what church is. Church is not just a place where we can find heating and, and a place that no. Church is not a building. The word church in the Greek, it does not denote bricks or mortar. The word church is a movement. It's a people. It's a fellowship. So right now, if I go outside and I say, hey, young boy on the street, When or where else have you experienced church outside of church in your life? Are you shouting out that warning? Whoa, whoa, there is an iceberg. There is a warning. There is an iceberg on the way. And the ship that you're on is going to hit the iceberg. Are you crying out? When you go through your phone book and your address book, in your phone book and your address book, there are loved ones. And if they are loved ones, lost 
and you were my friend. Do you know that I would ask God and say, I had a friend who went to that same Adventist church in Greece. If I can't go to heaven, she can't go out because she didn't tell me. Are you guys with today? In heaven, there are going to be crowns given to us. Amen, church? I can't wait for that crown in church. But guess what? Your crown, <laughs> let me just say it this way. There will be no starless crowns in heaven. You know what I mean, Chucky? Okay, you don't want to evangelize, then don't evangelize. If you don't want to evangelize, I'm being serious, church. Evangelism is not. Let's go, church. Come on, let's go. No, no. That's like saying, this is, this is all married men in the room and your beautiful wives are outside. They've not seen you for three months and you've been on holiday. And I'm like, guys, our wives are outside. Let's go and go and leave me alone. <laughs> if you love your wife, nobody has to tell you to, 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 to buy her flowers. No one has to tell you to tell her she looks beautiful. You guys hear me? In the morning. <laughs> Men, men, don't, 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 don't pound on men. When you say beautiful in the morning, that's real love, amen, Judge? Infatuation and superficial love, they don't go that far. I mean, serious. That's the love that the world portrays. My wife's a hairdresser, and she does hair for a living for over six years, and she does she clients. And, and, and do you know, when the husband walks in the room, and she told me this, so I love my head off. She said, Andrew, when her husband pulls up in the drive, she runs for the towel. Are you guys hear me? Because her weep is out. <laughs> and as I'm leaving the law, I'm not say, you're a I'm breaking it down. That is no love right there. Instantly in her mind, she's thinking, I am not worthy to be seen like this by my husband. So I have to hide my hair because he don't like me like this. I'm breaking it down. The world is outside. And I'm breaking down right now. The world, listen very carefully, if you are a true Christian, do you know your, your heart will be throbbing with excitement for the lost in the world? This is the issue of the church. This is why things come into the church that shock us. When we are inactive, we are, listen, when we are inactive, we are ripe for slaughter. When the church is a lazy church, the devil can wrap us up. Do you know, the devil cannot beat up a busy church. Busy in the home, that means mother and father and children, busy having worship, busy singing and praising, Your children's salvation is of your highest importance. If you're at home being busy with Jesus and the family, then in church you just replicate that. Oh, yeah. An inactive church is a mirror image of a broken home. Hello, church. I'm about to say this. If this church don't evangelize, the root problem is a broken home. Simple so as there's no ifs and buts about that. If we are not excited about the outside, we are a testament, as I told you this right now, and bring down how this ship capsized, we are a testament that you don't have to be somebody to save anybody. You can be a nobody and save anybody. You guys heard it today? It was only four years ago, a few of my friends who are nobodies, and me who is a nobody. Even though I was preaching years ago, I knew that the Lord, I wanted him to do something more mightier. Not because of me, but I said, God, I read in the Bible about all these pioneers. I read about Ellen White and William Miller and Paul and Silas and Daniel. And I'm saying, I'm looking around the UK and I don't see that God's power is stronger than the devil's power. Even though I know it, I don't see it. Because I see young people leaving the church. I see adults leaving the church. I see broken homes. I see, I see stale services. And we say, God, we're going to give our lives to you. We sing the songs. I give 
my soul away. Church, let's be honest. We only give like 5% away. And that's Sabbath. Let's be honest. If I said church tomorrow, evangelism, let's go. In the snow. Amen? Amen? I'm breaking it down. We said what? Show yourself strong through us. We pray. The Lord gave us in two weeks a camera that you see right there that cost over 3,000 pounds in one week. We have no money. That came through. An email said, we heard you guys want to start a ministry. We're going to buy the camera. We got the camera. We put it one sermon. Put the one sermon online, it's very carefully. I was doing a crusade in Hamburg Church in, in, in West London. A young boy called Dean Cullinan got baptized, and one month later, he preached his first sermon. 300 views in one night. 300 views. Then we said, okay, God, we are seeing that you're doing something big now. We had over, it's very carefully, over 1,000 subscribers in one month. Then we said, let us do more sermons, do more sermons. Start pre a preaching more sermons.
a bulldog, a lion in the church. You can be a whirlwind in the church. It matters how you are at home. Inspiration says on the books of heaven, we are going to be judged based on how we are at home and not how we are in the church. Uh oh. Many. No, no, church, I don't need to miss that church. Many of us are putting on our best show for church. We smile the most in church, happy Sabbath in church, I'm holy in church. I can't let the church know that I'm a mess. The devil pushes you to be like that. Carry on being faith, living for other faith people. Are you guys me? When you're coming to church, hiding from me. Church might not do the things you want it to do. 
Church might not look like how you want it to look like. Church might not sound like how you want it to sound like. Church might not even be like how you want it to be like. And this is our problem. We have taught a doctrine of church too ritualistic. A relationship with God. Yes, we come to church. But it is bigger than church. This is why if church is boring on people, you're supposed to have a relationship that is so exciting that church being boring is not going to cause you to leave. So if we think that just if we get nice music, then they'll stay, that means if the music calls, then they'll go. This is what I don't operate like. You know, let's get all the biggest singers. Let's get all the biggest. No, because once they go, the youth go. What the youth need and what the adults need, we just need to be one as a family. We need to be one, united. Bible says, very, very simply, the last thing that takes place with this church before it comes back, we need to become one. My plea is simple. You are on a ship right now. And yes, I'm being specific. This is the time where the enemy, he comes down with his demons. He knows this is a big time. This is the time where decisions are made for heaven or for hell. It was in an event like this where I was seen. And I wouldn't be here today if I didn't respond at that time. I'm breaking it down right now. You could be on a ship right now. You're going straight to the iceberg. I'm breaking it down just like, listen now, just like Jonah. The Bible said Jonah ran from God and he boarded a ship going to Tarshish. And then God, because he loves him, I'm breaking it down. What God is willing to do, he's willing to break your ship just to save your life. I've almost lost two brothers to the cold hands of death. They were attacked by gangs. The Lord was trying to save their life and they were listening. The Lord said, I'm gonna break your ship so that it's about to sink. And you see, at that moment of sinking, you raise your hand up and say, Jesus, save me. I'm telling you right now, people, many of you are here today, I've been down some places in my life. Places where young people here haven't even thought about going in the world. I'm telling you this as a fact. That's what's an opinion. If you know me, you know this. And I'm in church today, not because the world got boring. I'm in church today because the Lord, he took me deep into the world. Don't miss this now. He didn't take me out straight away. He took me in the world deep. And as I got deeper, I started to realize this is nowhere I want to be. I've lost friends that are in the grave right now. I've got friends, young people. I remember my best friend came to Baddam's Teens Day in 2008. He gave a testimony and stood up. Two weeks later, he was sentenced to life in prison. And now he's gone further from God. We brought him to church. He was like, Andrew, this is where I need to be. God is love. The devil saw he almost lost him and he sent down power to try to get him. When you say no to the people of God today, tomorrow they will become more silent in your ears. The Bible says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. My first appeal is simple, young people. You want Jesus to be the captain of your ship. It's not rocket science. I did not stutter. There was no need to even think about it too tough. Let's be realistic. You know that God is coming again. And if you want God to be the captain of your ship, I'm going to ask you to make your way to the front, even now. Even now, where you are, right now. Young people, especially wherever you are. Wherever you are. I know there's no people here today that are on a ship right now that could be leading down the wrong road. My opinion is very simple for you. And I'm not going to stop right there. 
if you want Jesus to be the captain of your ship today, make your way to the front right now in the name of Jesus. Because I've learned this is a warfare church. And the devil is a liar. This is not just ritualism where we just quote these appeals. I mean this. The enemy of souls is trying to catch our young people and to take them away from the truth. And I'm saying right now, all the time, if you are a young person here today and you want the Lord Jesus Christ to be the captain of your ship, make your way to the front right now in the name of Jesus. If coming to the front is hard for you, raise your hand up wherever you are. If coming to the front is hard for you, raise your hand up wherever you are. That's okay. No, that's okay. Our young people have to learn this. My dear sister, take my hand. Our young people have come with me. Our young people, sister, don't worry. I'm not your shy. Trust me. Trust me. Don't worry. Our young people have to learn this. And I'm going to say this boldly. We have made church this way. You guys heard me today? We made church this way. My dear sister, you don't have to worry. Let me tell you why. Because in the world, in the world, when we look at young people, we see that they're willing to jump up and down for the enemy. We see that they're willing when there's something going on. But the devil's a liar. He has come inside this church and he has put us to sleep so fast that there's young people that want to come up. But they've been doing church for so long. They've been coming here week after week. And they've been like, oh man, this is just... So when they hear the word now, just like the demoniac, remember when Jesus had to come to the place and, and, and his preacher said, he was crying out for Jesus inside, but only Jesus could hear him. I'm breaking it down now, people. You don't have to be frightened of anything. God has healing in his wings. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what can keep you. And I'm going to say it one more time. One more time, especially my young people, my soldiers. Young people are not tomorrow's church. They are today's church. After, at the end of the day, pastoral ministry is, is letting our pastors now, the age of 21 years old. You guys heard me today? 20 people go to Jamaica, 19 year old pastors, 18 year old pastors. They have it right down there in the Caribbean. Again, 
to be the throne of God. Where the Spirit can dwell in your houses. I'm going to ask you to make your way to the front. You want the cleansing away over your household. You can stand to your feet. The never last six days church. Are you guys hearing me? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. One day we can come today. One day we have today, church, to get right with God. I know the time is gone. But this one name the Lord has said, set aside to make yourself right with God. The old song says, as we pray, every soul by sin oppressed, there is mercy in the Lord. It says that he will surely, as a promise, give you rest. But there's one condition. Old song says, by trusting in his word. So church, I plead, I plead with you. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him now. Why? For he has saved you. He will save you and he can save you now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are humbly praying before you, knowing that there is power in the blood. We know from experience that God is real. We have seen the enemy defied in the Bible. David defeated. We have seen, Lord, the enemy fallen so many times. And today, Lord, it's no different. There are giants in our life that need to be slain. There are demons in our homes that need to be cast out. There are ways that we have. We have mindsets. We have full processes that are not in tune with you. But we are thankful that the mind of Christ is available today. Father God, whoever needs that new mind, whoever needs the clean heart, provide it even now, today, right now, by faith. Whoever needs, Lord, the cleansing way over their houses, do it right now, by faith. Whoever is struggling in the home, whoever can see that the enemy, they, though they know the enemy is taken over, but right now they're claiming the victory by faith. Do it, Lord, right now. For those, Lord, who are doubting the truth in the Bible, for those who are thinking, should I join this church? For those who are thinking about leaving, Lord, I pray that you can allow their faith to find a resting place. Lord, do it right now. Father, God, in the name of Jesus, find the devil where he is. Find him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Cast him out, that old servant. And Lord, as we can Sing the song that says, Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, that has now just been freely bestowed on all who believe. The old song says, All of you are willing to see his face, we know you this moment is going to receive. It says, Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. The old song says, Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will cleanse us from all our sin. Claim what you have expected from the Lord even now. And I pray with you speak in the name of Jesus. And everyone that is here today said amen and amen. Amen, church.